uh, to understand more about the intake process and the information we gather there. It's also important to understand not just the level of where the problem is uh, yeah, within the client, but also to, to understand where the problem might be coming from in relation to the client's environment. So the easiest part of that to assess is usually the social environment. Some people are experiencing trouble because of their friends, their family, um, they might have an argument with somebody, they might be in love with somebody, um, there might be a disturbed relationship with one or another. And we are very social animals as human beings and often the largest stress factors are things which happen on a very social level within our relationships with others and also when something happens a lot of buttons get pushed a lot of old pains old traumas can resurface but Quite often, when the problem is a person in their environment, it's relatively easy to track which person that might be or what the problem might be, because the person will experience acute distress when they are in that situation or have been in that situation or have been in contact with that person. So the social aspect might be tricky to handle, but it's not so difficult to identify. Much more um, hidden layer is the astrological layer. When we are born we have a certain constellation of planets. And this constellation of planets really allows certain planetary energies and influences to combine with other elementary powers and ultimately they form a personality. But they don't just form a personality, they also form cycles. These cycles combine to form a path. No, maybe not exactly a path, but you could rather say currents of energy. And these currents can be used to move very quickly, or you can try to resist them and thereby create a kind of a stagnation. So, depending on a person's personal constellation of planets, and how these planets have shifted over time. The person might experience that they are more emotional, they are more lucky, they are more unlucky, uh, they are more flexible or more rigid, more uh, inspired, more sensitive or less sensitive in various periods of their lives. So if we understand what is actually, astrologically speaking, the opportunity which is presenting itself, then we might also understand why certain problems or certain issues are surfacing at that particular moment or at that particular place on earth. As it is on the one hand what moment we find ourselves at, but also if we are on different places on the earth, also the planets and stars will be in slightly different positions, which can also affect us quite strongly. So a person might feel yeah, very restricted if by living in a certain country, but if they would move maybe even a relatively small distance, a few hundred kilometers, then already there might be quite a shift in the energy flows and the person might feel very liberated from the pressures which they're experiencing at the moment. This layer requires a lot more study to comprehend and so to see how it might be a factor in the current problems. But understanding a person's horoscope is really also understanding a person's purpose, a, pur a person's talents which they want to bring forward in their lives. So I think that at least some knowledge of astrology can be very helpful in working with your clients. But all clients are open to uh, to something like this and it does require quite a bit of time and study. So it might not be their good option for everybody but it's something you can think about to understand why problems are surfacing at that particular time or place. 
So the next level is the spiritual level. And here it can become quite complex because we're not only dealing with the client's own spirit, but we're also dealing with the spirits which are living in their environment. So the spirits of the house, of the city, of the place, or even of the country or culture or race might be involved. Ancestral spirits might play a role. Deceased friends and family might play a role. And besides the, you could say, the spirits linked to your client, there's also other spirits. Maybe the spirit guides of their partners or people they have an argument with. That's even discounting possible aggressive spirits which might be sent by um, adversaries or um, the influence of, for instance, egregores. Then there's of course the higher spirits, different deities, um, saints, um, spiritual masters, who can also play quite a strong role in that person's life and development. Finally, there are also, um, you could say, the more parasitical or symbiotical spirits, which are also somehow limiting the person. So, <clears throat> looking at the spirit side can be quite daunting, especially in the beginning, because there are so many of them, and you have to ask the right questions and look at the right things to be able to assess their spiritual circumstances. But realistically speaking, the astral world is so vast and complex that it's not possible to have a complete assessment, a complete view of the person's spiritual environment. So usually I will, in a way, limit myself by trying to talk to the person's own spirit or their higher self, which is the not incarnated part of their spirit and to their main groups of guides. Often these uh, clusters of uh, spirit guides will also show the different conflicts which are existing within the person. So one group of guides might be in favor of solving the problem this way, another group might be, involving, might be interested in solving the problem in another way, and the third group might have a completely different solution to the problem altogether. And if the person's guides are not in alignment, usually the person's thoughts and emotions are not in alignment. And they will yeah, experience a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, a lot of confusion, um, the mind's changing like the weather, depending on which spirit group is yeah, ascendant at that, uh, at that time. And I will also usually look at significant others in that uh, situation. So often the, uh, their direct superior at work, uh, their life partner. Uh, there are also ones you, could, you should really assess if you're doing a spirit assessment to have a look at that. If the person is involved in um, yeah, magical activities, it is possible also that they have magical enemies. So that is also something you might want to look at. And if there might be spirits which are sent to trouble them, or if there might be curses present in their uh, energy body. So this is very much a more uh, specialized discipline. Not everybody is equally skilled uh, at talking with spirits. And you should first practice in talking with your own guides, and your guides can usually also talk to other spirits. So this is usually the simplest and safest method to assess the other person's spiritual environment. Uh, by opening up yourself directly to the spirits surrounding your client, you might also make yourself vulnerable to them. And if your client might be for instance, very unstable, or their life force is very disrupted, um, or they're um, involved in substance abuse. It's very likely that if you open up to the client, that you will, um, yeah, be exposed to their energetic parasites, which will also be harmful to you, and can take quite a lot of time in getting rid of. 
your client is involved in some um, energetic combat with somebody else, you might also be want to be quite careful before making yourself a target by choosing sides in a conflict. Often these conflicts can rage for uh, many lifetimes or maybe your client and your client's adversary are just pawns in a war between egregores. So it might not always be very easy or even possible to solve such an energetic conflict. Of course, such a conflict can be more understood by trying to yeah, uh, talk with all the parties involved. But uh, choosing sides immediately and becoming one of the co-belligerents, I would not advise. So, if we go a little bit deeper still, beyond the layer of spirit, we come to the karmatic layer. And it's important to understand karma in the correct way. It is not so much a system of uh, reward and punishment. It is not moral in that sense. Um, but it is a system of uh, reinforcement. And you could say repaying a person's efforts or rewarding a person's skill. In each person's lifetime they will work with several energies and they will learn to master certain things and they will also show that they cannot deal with certain other things. So we all have chromatic strengths and we all have chromatic challenges. Depending on our strengths and challenges and also the choice of the spirit, we will have more or less opportunities to work on our personal growth in each lifetime. So if a person cannot handle a lot of complexity, generally their karmatic tests will be also more limited, more simple, and more time will pass between the tests. If a person has shown a lot of promise in their previous lifetime, then often the person will be allowed to move into a more challenging uh, life path. If we are look, trying to look at the person's karma and how it is involved in the person's challenges, it's also very important to, accept, to have restraint as a therapist. If we solve the person's problem, then karmatically they will yeah, not have gained anything. They will not have mastered their problem. They will not have developed their skills. So generally if a problem is karmatic in nature, as a therapist I will explain the problem to the client and I will allow the client to solve it by themselves because in a way by helping you're not helping you're in a way stealing a person's opportunity for self-development to know if a problem is karmatic or not it can be useful to uh, do a regression to have a look at past lives and past life problems and often if the person can start to remember and to reprocess the problems from the past life. Also the karmatic component will reveal itself and the person can resolve the problems which they were unable to resolve in the past life by developing their skill in the present situation. And thereby the karma will be resolved and also the problem will disappear from the current incarnation. To know if a problem is karmatic or not um, I usually try to either talk to the person's guide, to the person's higher self, or to the gods of karma, Kuan Yin and Lord Yama. And usually they can tell you if the person's issues are karmatic or what exactly that karma is. So praying to these deities can be very enlightening when uh, dealing with a client who has deep-rooted issues, which are in a way and reoccurring and are not responding to normal treatment because a person's life path is very resilient and even if a problem is solved and completely eradicated from the current life karma will recreate these problems again and again until the person has developed enough skill and then the negative karma the lesson of karma will turn into a talent of karma which they can take into their uh, upcoming incarnations. So talking about karma also already introduces the last topic 
namely reincarnation problems. Uh, people can take things, inherit them, you could say, from their previous lives. They can also inherit them from the place they are born. So a person can in a way, incarnate the trauma of uh, the race or the place in which they are born into and also the problems of their ancestors. Because the person has not personally experienced the creation of the problem or the growth of the problem, uh, often these problems are subliminal, they are on a subconscious level, and this makes them very hard for the conscious mind to deal with them, to understand them, to get a grip on them. It is possible to work on these problems in, in several ways. The easiest and usually the best way is to try to make these memories um, come to the, to the conscious mind. So leading your client into a trance state, and then stimulating certain places of the body where you think there might be energetic blockages and seeing what symbols or what imagery might come up will allow the client to see certain occurrences in which they themselves might not have been involved but which might be imprints of uh, the place, the race or the ancestors. So they can relive experiences which they not have not themselves experienced but by reliving them and in a way transforming the energies um, they can be resolved. Because we all absorb energies out of our environment and we're in a way built up out of energies of our ancestors. But any energy which is stuck in a pattern is in a way inflexible and unaccessible. And this inflexibility and this inability to go into that part of our energy body can cause a lot of friction. So by resolving all these things, by turning all these patterns into just fluid liquid energy which is responsive to our situation and responsive to our spirit, such a blockage can be turned into a resource. So all these problems arising from our yeah, environment and ancestry, they're not really uh, attacks even though they can be experienced as such. But you can look upon it as giving something new or bringing something new into that environment. You're born in an environment where maybe people are unable to deal with loss or unable to connect emotionally or uh, have fear of death. And by working with these issues you can enrich this environment, you can in a way, develop a medicine for what is ailing not only you but apparently also your family, your ancestors, your environment, um, your race. And by developing this cure, by healing yourself, you also become a medicine, a healing power within your environment. And you can pass on this medicine also to your environment and also to your offspring. And to the places you visit, where you lived. So those negative energies will linger, but also the positive energies will linger. And by working on transforming the energies around us, we're creating a better and better world, a lighter and lighter world, which creates more and more opportunities and support for spiritual growth. So, I hope that this has given you some insight on different areas where the problems might lie and how to address these issues in working with your client.